What is your name, please? My name is Gary Morfitt. My name is Gary Morfitt. My name is Gary Morfitt. Follow along again, if you will, with your copies of this one. I, Gary Morfitt, am a student in Cornell University's School of Hotel Administration. Last year, a friend and I decided to get some practical experience. We formed a corporation, sold stock, and bought some land four miles from the campus. Then we bought three old railroad boxcars, placed them side by side, knocked out the adjoining walls, rebuilt the interior, and opened a night spot called the boxcar. The lighting fixtures are railroad lanterns. The seats in the booths are green felt coach chairs. Coat hooks are railroad spikes. And the footrail around the bar is made from a section of track. All of us on the staff wear black derbies and red and white striped shirts. We serve such appropriate drinks as the steam engine and the golden spike. On Friday and Saturday nights, customers dance along a winding railroad track painted in black on the floor. To make the picture complete, I, the president of the corporation, live right next door in a converted railroad caboose. Signed, Gary Morfitt. Very well, panel. These three young men all claim to be Gary Morfitt. We'll start with Tom Poston. Tom? Well, I have an interesting uh, sort of an aside from the fact question I'd like to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us are familiar with another Gary Morfitt or Thomas Garrison Morfitt or something. Number uh, uh, two, are you perhaps related to this man, also known to us as Gary Moore? Perhaps. I get, I'll take that as... Is, yeah. Are you... Uh, yes. Number one, uh, directly, are you his son? Uh, yes, sir. Ah, proud to know you. Proud to know any part of that family. Uh, number three, do you serve alcoholic drinks at this night spot? Yes, we do. Well, number two, how did you manage that, if it's true? Is it true, and how did you manage that? To serve alcoholic beverages? Yeah, were you older than 21 or something when you started the night spot? Oh, yes. And then I take it, number one, that the customers must all be over what age? 18 in New York. Thank you. Peggy Cass. Thank you. Uh, number one, is your place in Ithaca? Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, number two, how much do the cars cost? The box cars? The box cars were 500 apiece. 1500 Well, number three, how much did it cost you all together to open the place up? Uh, approximately $30,000. Gee whiz. Number two, how much is a stein of beer? Uh, 75 cents. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, number one, do you have a little ukulele band or a banjo band or do you have a jukebox? No, we have live music, uh, different types of groups on different evenings. Oh, thank you. Now, number three, where did you get your kitchen? Did you get a railroad kitchen? Uh, no, this was all improvised after we have a regular kitchen built in. Marston B. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad, number one, that you have a foot rail. I'm all for that. I have uh, bumped my chin on many of them. Uh, what is, what is uh, the steam engine? What are the ingredients of the steam engine? Uh, the steam engine is a uh, large martini. A large martini? Grand. Bless my soul. Number three, how could you blow 30 grand on, on, on throwing together some more? You could have built a whole house for 30 grand. Uh, this was completely redoing from the start. This was just a shell, these boxes. Is it really posh? Is, excuse me? Posh. Is it posh? No, sir. Elegant, Swank. grand. They don't say that in Ithaca? <laughs> Collegiate. Uh, Remember the truth? <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Ithaca swing since you opened the <laughs> Number two, how do you manage your studies and all this work uh, at the bar? It's rough. But you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Number one, uh, you have a drink called the Golden Spike. Do you know who drove the real Golden Spike when the two uh, railroads m managed to meet? Uh, no, I don't. You don't know who it was? No, I don't. Number three, what is a golden spike in your restaurant? A golden spike is a champagne cocktail. Thank you. Uh, number one, uh, when you, well, if, if this thing costs so much to put together, what are the profits so far, don't you want to say? Well, we've only been open for a short time, so it's hard to say. But you think you will have some? That's it. Time for you now to mark your ballots. So mark them at once, panel, if you will, please, for the one you think is the real one. And vote without any consultation whatsoever, and don't change once you have marked your ballot. Vote for number one, or vote for number two, or vote for number three. Ballots are 
finally all marked. So, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I think that certainly Gary could be proud of any of those fellows. But I, I voted for number two because uh, he seemed to have a clearer idea about how to do this and study at the same time. And I think that must be very important. Peggy Cat. Well, I voted for number three because, you know, Orson does talk awful collegiate. <laughs> <laughs> Orson B. Mercy. I, uh, I figure maybe number two is wearing a derby because he has a crew cut under there and doesn't want us to see it. And even though he looks a little bit like Gary Moore, I voted for him anyway because I really think he, he's the one. So it's fair. Gary Carlisle. Well, I've been trying to figure out which one looked like the real Gary Moore, and I don't know. So I voted for number one. He looked to me like a fellow who could swing both uh, a bar. Huh? Oh, what did I do? No, nothing. Uh, did I do something bad? Just go on. Don't be thrown off, Kitty. Go right ahead. Well, he looks as though he could swing a bar, and he could swing everything, and he could also do his studies, <laughs> and I've done something dreadful. Oh, you have done anything Bad enough to tell anybody he looks like a man who could swing from a bar. Uh, <laughs> votes are all in, and uh, there we have it. We'll find out now which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is Gary Morfitt. Will the real Gary Morfitt please? Stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and please give our great, deep, and sincere love to your dad, will you? Certainly. Pleasure you. to have you on the show. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Frank Adusi, and I teach English at the New York Phoenix School of Design. <laughs> What is your real name and what do you do, sir? Uh, my name's Chris Day and I'm currently unemployed. Checking the score, we find you did well. And with three incorrect votes, that's three times $250 total. Therefore, that you take along a divide is $750. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for being with us. Hope you enjoyed yourselves as much as you made it happy for us. Goodbye and God bless you.